in addition to recognizes a problem, we really need to come together on what are the right solutions. One of those in my mind clearly is an industrial policy. If we allow the private sector to simply maximize for profit, which it's very good at, we're gonna get some capabilities we want as a nation, but we might get a few more dating apps and uh, ad targeting companies than we do uh, companies focused on bringing fusion or quantum computing to reality. So if you think about it from a national capability standpoint, you really need more of an industrial policy which is focused on technology. Industrial policy for many years had a bad name as we're picking winners and losers of in companies that will serve a function for our economy. If you look at previous examples like France, you'd say that hasn't worked out very well. My perspective of industrial policy is we need to pick the sectors where the U.S. needs to lead. So those are areas like fusion, synthetic biology, quantum, AI. And what do we do to set the conditions so that uh, the, those industries can win and the U.S. can have leading positions. It's such things as, are we spending enough in basic R&D? While that's been our strength since World War II, that's been on the decline since the 1960s in terms of the percentage of federal budget, percentage of GDP that's spent on federal R&D. Recent moves uh, oh. that the Trump administration has made set us back a little bit further. Immigration policy is a part of that, to be able to attract the world's best talent. Leveraging the strength of having the world's best universities uh, is a part of that. Making sure that the private sector has the right long-term incentives. Uh, since the 1980s, the private sector has increasingly been focused on this concept of shareholder value. Uh, if we take care of the shareholders, everything else will follow. That's true in a world where everyone thinks the way you do. If we're all capitalistic economies and we can trade freely with each other, that Milton Friedman in Chicago School of Thought makes a ton of sense. Uh, I was a fan of it myself. In a world where we have geopolitical rivals, peer rivals, uh, where supply chains can be used uh, competitively and even punitively, that world does not make sense anymore. Now we have to make sure that we have access to the key raw materials we need, whether that's rare earths or other um, materials and uh, that we have long-term incentives so that we can think about what do we need from a national capability standpoint 10 or 20 years from now. Our capital markets are not designed for that. They're designed for optimizing for the short term, not for bringing national capabilities to the fore. So some rethinking both on the government side and the private sector side would really put us in much better uh, position for this competition. Just one more point about government. The whole government structure that we have from a national security enterprise was designed in the Cold War. The Department of Defense constructed in 1947, the National Security Council. That was all facing, again, a lumbering Soviet system, mostly focused on a military and ideological competition. This competition is about economics and technology. And the Chinese have figured out how important those relate to each other and how important they are in the national agenda. It's not clear from our government structure or even the rhetoric of the key leaders in power in Washington, that that is seen as the central battleground in this competition with China. And therefore, do we have the right structures in place to, to be able to, to uh, address those challenges? Yeah, uh, I think that industrial policy piece that you talk about, right, I, I think is critical. It's, it's something that the U.S. in many ways had forgotten or had, had, had stopped thinking about as a, as a strategy, right? Um, market-oriented forces, pure market-oriented forces, let's say, had taken over in the last 30, 40 years at least, uh, whereas the Chinese have been thinking about differently, have been acting differently, as you mentioned, that they have a much more top-down, state-oriented approach on where they want to focus. Um, but in many ways, the natural question that comes up, right, Michael, uh, is... You are highlighting now a bigger role for the government to direct the sectors in which the private sector should be working on. You want to let, I'm assuming, if I was to go uh, sort of presume the next step is let the winners be determined by the market, but the sectors be directed in some ways, priority sectors be determined by the government in line with the geopolitical battle that you're facing with China and what tech areas or arenas the U.S. also considers critical in that battle. 
Do you run the risk of becoming more and more like the China uh, that you are trying to fight? In that, I don't. Uh, I don't think so. I, I think the one clarification I would make to the way you frame this is: I'm not asking for the government to lead the sectors or direct the sectors. I'm asking for the government to set the conditions so that these uh, sectors would attract more investment and uh, be uh, thinking about uh, incentives for the private sector to be able to come in and commercialize the technology that comes from the, the efforts in those sectors. So the government role is really about thinking about factors of production. I need to make sure that uh, to the extent uh, I need capital, are there incentives for capital to come in? Let's take a quick example. So if I'm thinking about fusion or quantum computing, uh, quantum computing a little bit closer to reality. So private sector has come in. You could argue whether that's fast enough. On fusion, not so much. An equally critical or more critical technology is a factor of production. Energy is critical. So yeah. the, where the government can play a role is for these risky and capital intensive uh, sectors. Uh, the government can help prove the maturity of the technology. That's a traditional role that government has played. But if we look at, again, the amount of R&D dollars that the government's putting to work, it's a fraction of what it was uh, in the 1960s. To put a number on that, in the 1960s, we spent 2% of GDP. So think about how much money that would be today. 2% times a $27 trillion economy would be $500 billion. We're spending less than half of that today. In fact, the number today is 0.6% of GDP being spent on uh, federal funded R&D. So the question is, is that the profile of an economy that's focused on its future and developing the technologies for the next 20, 30, 40 years, which will keep the US ahead? I would argue that that investment that was made in the space race, the first space race of the 1960s, and right after that, that brought the development of the semiconductor industry and following that, uh, you know, advanced computing, networking technology, storage technology, that really laid the groundwork for the internet. And of course, the government was involved in developing that through DARPA in the 1960s. Those kind of investments lead to kind of untold benefits in terms of technology that can be commercialized that the private sector runs with and creates incredible economic benefits. It's that that's the reason why 40% of the S&P 500 market cap today is tech. It's played such a critical role in our economy. So are we making the investments today? Where's the seed corn that will make sure that in uh, 2030, 2040, 2050, the U.S. is still leading in those next technologies, whether that's AI, synthetic bio, quantum, or whatever they might be. That's the kind of approach we need to have. So attracting the right capital, making sure there's enough basic R&D, which is a role really only the government could do, no individual company or financial actor can do that. Immigration, are we attacking the right uh, talent? Do we have the universities where that research can take place? The health of our institutions like National Labs, DARPA, IARPA, et cetera, they need to be vibrant. Those are what I call setting the conditions to make sure that from that, the right technologies get commercialized and then the private sector comes in and we see, as you indicated, who are the winners? Yes, let the marketplace decide that. The government should not be picking winners and losers among the companies.